Morning, everybody. Great to see everybody here on this wintry morning. Just a couple of announcements, a couple inserts in the bulletin. One is an insert from the Erie Catholic School System. We are celebrating Catholic Schools Week this week. And even though uh, we only have our preschool here at St. Boniface, we continue to support Catholic education and the many young people from our family who attend our local Catholic schools. So I invite you to read that over. If you would like to participate in their annual fund, the information for that is on the back. So you can take a look at that in the bulletin. <clears throat> Also in the bulletin, you will find a financial report. This is not a quarterly report. It's putting the two quarters together. It's six months leading up to December 31st. You can read about that in the bulletin. Uh, please note in the income section, when, it looks at, when you look at the funds that we have, a number of those funds are designated funds. That is, they are specifically designated for certain things, like, for example, the CSA, or if we get, <clears throat> for example, a donation that is dedicated to a certain thing. Uh, so this is not just money that we have to spend any way we want. Uh, it's earmarked for certain things. So just be aware of that as you look at that report. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call the parish office. A reminder, too, to mark your calendars for our upcoming St. Patrick's Day reverse raffle and party. That is scheduled for Saturday, March 14th, following the 5 o'clock Mass. So just mark your calendars. More information and tickets and so forth will be coming soon. Just asking you again to mark your calendars for that. <clears throat> As you can see, we have here in our sanctuary, again, the icon for Our Lady Help of Persecuted Christians. This is an initiative of the Knights of Columbus. It travels around the country and in inviting parishes to just raise our awareness of persecuted Christians around the world and also to encourage us to pray for persecuted Christians. Uh, there are a few prayer booklets in the back if you are interested and uh, just invite you maybe after Mass to spend a few moments in prayer asking for Our Lady's intercession for those who are persecuted for their faith. <clears throat> today is also the Feast of St. Blaise. Or it's not today, sorry, it's tomorrow is the Feast of St. Blaise. Uh, but we will be celebrating the traditional blessing of throats for the Feast of St. Blaise after Mass today. So if you'd like to have your throat blessed, just invite you after Mass to come forward as you would at communion time in two lines, and we will do the blessing of throats after Mass. And then finally, in the gathering space, as we mentioned last weekend, uh, if you would like to participate in the Super Bowl being held by the Second Harvest Food Bank, that is SOUP, looking to gather non-perishable food items. We do have a box in the back of the, in the gathering space there. If you'd like to drop those off, we'll make sure they get to the food pantry. So, thank you. Please stand and join in our entrance antiphon found on page 67 in the Breaking Bread, page 67. Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Please join me in reciting the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so, by your grace, we may be presented to you with minds made pure, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant who you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Our response. Who is this King of Glory? It is the Lord. Lift up, O gates, your lintels. Reach up, you ancient portals, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up, O gates, your lintels, reach up, you ancient portals, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and, f and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, and through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God, to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. Coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Many stories have grabbed national headlines of late. The president's impeachment trial, the coronavirus, the Super Bowl. But even now, a full week later, the story that seems to command our interest the most is the untimely death of NBA superstar Kobe Bryant. We just can't seem to wrap our heads around it the seemingly invincible legend of his sport, dying so suddenly at such a young age, an incident made even more tragic by the simultaneous death of his daughter. It confronts us in a way that few experiences can with the reality of death. There have been, and undoubtedly will continue to be, many retrospectives and reflections on the media and at sporting events on Kobe Bryant's life and accomplishments, both on and off the court. But one part of his life you probably won't hear much about is his religious faith. Kobe Bryant is Catholic. Notice what I said. He is Catholic, not was. A fundamental core belief of our faith is that with death, Life is changed, not ended. As we hear in today's second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, that is the very reason that Christ came, to conquer death and open the gates of eternal life for all people. The reading goes on to tell us that Christ didn't do this for angels. To be sure, Kobe Bryant was no angel. As he himself publicly acknowledged, no, he was a sinner, 
in need of salvation, just as we all are. And that is exactly why he needs a Savior, Jesus Christ, and exactly why Christ came. Having said that, I can't sta stand up here and say with absolute certainty that Kobe Bryant is in heaven. That is not mine to judge, nor is it anyone else's. Like all of us, that is between him and God. What I can say with absolute certainty is that Christ did not take on our flesh, enter into our experience, suffer everything we do, including death, just to condemn us. He did it to save us, and so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. There is no more abundant life than to share fully forever in the life of God, which is what Christ promises for all those who place their faith in him. That is the basis of our faith, that Christ died and rose again to give us life. That is the reason for our hope, that being joined to Christ in a death like his, we will also share in his resurrection. That is the purpose of our lives, to invite all people to share that life too. So let's get about it and shine the light of the risen Christ into every corner and every tragedy of this darkened world. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Persico, Father Mark, and all priests and deacons, that the words of scripture may find a home in their hearts and that they may announce the word with boldness and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may have the freedom to leave everything and follow Jesus' call to serve the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who help others find Christ, for spiritual directors, catechists, missionaries, and evangelists, that they may share the good news of Jesus in life-giving and healing ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of hope, that all who find themselves walking in darkness may be renewed in mind and spirit with a vision and promise of life and wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that the Spirit will ease their suffering, bring encouragement through the care of the Christian community, and restore them to wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater appreciation and dedication to human life, that God will help us respect and defend the value of life from conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, 
and for the living and deceased of St. Boniface Parish, that they may rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way today for the gift of life you give us in your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask you to help us be witnesses of that life in the world today, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and a light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation, and with the angels and saints, praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, the only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. go in peace. Amen. Again, immediately following Mass, if you would like to receive the blessing of throats for the Feast of St. Blaise, we will ask you just to process forward as you would at communion time in two lines. <laughs>